Okay, wow, this is impressive. So it actually recognizes the different objects. This works really, really well. So I was just scrolling the Affinity Photo website and I saw that they offer a beta software program. 2.6 beta is now available. So we're currently at 2.5.5, I think. I'm not even sure. But I was just curious what the new improvements are going to be. And honestly, two of the features I'm pretty excited for. We've got the list right here. And so there are some advanced page management things. But this one right here, machine learning, object selection tool and select subject. This is something that many Affinity Photo users and especially people who come from Photoshop have actually been waiting for. Now, once you click on object selection tool, um, it just explains what it is and it is a machine learning feature. As you will see, there are two new features which use machine learning models for automatic object and subject selections. These features are optional and require downloading of the relevant models for them to work. We want to make sure it is clear that these are installed as pre-trained models and they do not use any of your own data for further training. Furthermore, these operations all work on device, meaning none of your data leaves your device at any time. So you actually have to install these things first in order to actually use these features. Now, what this basically does, and we're going to test this out in just a moment, is this will actually allow us to select an object with one click. And this is going to be a game changer because before we had to use selection tools. So uh, we had to manually select everything. And now we can actually just click and select an object. And this is the icon for the new tool. So this is going to be the object selection tool, as you can see right here. And as far as I can see, it is a fairly straightforward tool. So you can either select like a multi-part object. Um, if you enable this and you click on the branch right here, it will also an, um, select the rest of the branch, let's say. And if you uncheck this, you can see that it only selects the specific part, let's say. So it's bounded by the snake, let's say in this case. And there's also options to actually just select parts of what you want to select so either the whole subject either the hair or either only your face etc so this is pretty pretty interesting to see this is the ob object selection tool and then there is going to be a select subject feature well this this information is basically the same so we've got to install um, the machine learning models first it is basically like a select subject button inside of the menu and it will select our subject for us now honestly i haven't really tried these features yet but i actually just signed up for their beta program so you can see like affinity photo 2 and the beta version has this nice little b logo or the beta logo so you cannot really confuse it with the original one and also the beta version is like a separate app so it doesn't interfere with like the normal affinity photo app however they actually do warn that if you're gonna use their um, beta software don't use it for production work because it is a beta version so there might be bugs and there might be issues that you encounter while using the software so this means that if you work on professional work just don't do it because if there is going to be a bug um, your professional work might be destroyed or something please also consider that documents saved in this beta version may not be backward compatible with the current really uh, currently released version so everything you create in the beta version can only be opened in the beta version so that is important for, uh, to know right now so let's actually go and open our affinity photo beta and so you can see there's 2.6 right here and the first thing it does it it prompts me to sign in with my idea because you have to have like a purchase license of affinity photo in order to log in so let's actually do that activation successful yes please link my app to my account yes yeah, sure why not would you like to contribute anonymous usage data yes yeah, sure i mean it's the better version i would be happy to help why not all right so let's actually make this bigger so here's my account you can see the idea right now is here beta 2-x let's just open a picture so as mentioned i haven't really done anything so i'm just gonna let's say hit open 
and I'm gonna go to downloads and I'm just gonna open any picture. Let's say this guy. So we're gonna open this image right here and let's actually see what we can do. Oh, by the way, if you love using Affinity Photo, then I'm sure you will absolutely love the Affinity Photo Creatives community. It is absolutely free to join and we've just crossed 1,200 members in only four months. Inside, you will find a whole bunch of like-minded creatives who all love using Affinity Photo. We do monthly photo editing challenges and as you can see, the current challenge is Halloween movie posters. Also, we go live every single week to just hang out, meet other members, talk affinity and so on. So if this sounds awesome to you, click the link down below to join the community. All right, let's get back into the video. Now, of course, I mentioned we first have to install the drivers. So let's go to settings and then there's the machine learning uh, models. So yeah, let's just install both of them. You need to have both of them uh, installed so the segmentation and the saliency i don't even know how to pronounce it but let's actually do that right now so the segmentation model allows photo to create precise detailed pixel selections from pixel layers or placed images use the object selection tool to make your selection and the saliency or saliency i'm not sure uh, allows photo to understand what is visually important in a pixel layer or placed image installed alongside the segmentation model it enables the single click menu select subject so the first one is segmentation which means like to select different parts of the object and then we've got the um, select subject feature let's see how this actually performs all right so both of them are installed so let's actually close this thing and let's see if this actually works. So I'm gonna go to select and I'm gonna hit select subject and let's see what happens. I have already read somewhere that's like with hair and fur, you still have to use the refine button, but let's just see what Affinity Photo does. Okay, interesting. So it didn't select the book, which kind of makes sense um but let's see if we can use the object selection tool which is this new little icon right here let's add to our selection and let's just hover over the book and click okay wow this is impressive so it actually recognizes the different objects and what i've seen is that if i hold alt i can actually select oh wow just the hair just the shirt can we just select the shirt okay we cannot really just select the shirt okay but let's say we've got our selection right here i see it missed like a couple of pixels so we still have to fix those but i think this looks pretty promising so i can just use the quick selection brush i think to brush over these areas and let's hit refine because well let's just mask it out first to see what it does and it actually did quite a good job already, as you can see. Not too bad, nothing too crazy, um, but nothing too crazy. Well, nothing, not too bad, actually. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to refine the selection, which is what, what I would usually do. So refine mask and actually increase my brush size a little bit and brush over the hair. And let's see how Affinity Photo performs. Um, also right here, near the ear like this boom all right and a little bit right here all right let's see so if we're just gonna output it as a mask and let's actually create some other color background to see like how it did so on a white background honestly it looks pretty pretty good i see there are some masking mistakes here but we can fix those at the bottom as well but in general i'm pretty excited about this result Okay, now let's actually delete all of these and let's use our selection uh, tool or, or our object selection tool. So let's say we only want to select his hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect multi-part object and I'm just going to hover over his hair. So let's hold alt and okay, so it includes his beard, which kind of makes sense. Um, well, like this, he doesn't include his beard. So let's click right now and wow. Okay, let's hit refine and let's see if we can just, <laughs> if we can just extract this hair. Okay, this looks very, very promising on this uh, actually. 
But of course, like I've picked quite an easy um, subject in this case. So let's actually see if we put this on a new layer. What do we have left? We've okay, not too bad. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, so let's delete this and let's actually go for something more. Um, let's call, let's say a lion or something. So something more furry. And um, well, let's take a, a, a relatively easy one for now. Yeah, sure. Like I know this, they're not provided. Let's go for this one. All right, so here we've got another image and let's see if we can use our um, selection. Well, let's just do the select subject and let's see what it does. Okay, let's mask it out and let's see. That is... Okay, it's selecting everything except the line, which is pretty interesting. Let's do that again. So, select the line, select subject. It, I think it does the same thing. So, apparently, it selects the background, um, which is pretty interesting. So, if I invert my selection and then mask it out, you can see it is far from perfect but it is a very good start actually um this is something that's pretty annoying like i don't know why affinity photo does this but um yeah usually when you select something it just leaves this little trace so what i would usually do is get my um, rectangular marquee tool just select it and hit delete with the mask selected but okay this is pretty cool now let's obviously like see how it is gonna perform with my refine selection tool um, I expect it to do a very, very good job because this is a very easy image once again um, because the line is very distinct from the background. So like this, it did a, sorry, it did a pretty, pretty darn good job. All right, let's go to some other image, which is more difficult. So when the subject is basically kind of blending in with the background. So let's go for this one maybe. All right, let's see how the subject select tool is gonna perform in this case. So I'm just gonna put it, position it in the middle. And let's see. So we're gonna select the image, we're gonna go up to select and then select subject. Pretty curious what it's gonna do now. Okay, it has no idea, I think. It didn't select anything. Um, let's try that again. Okay, I think this is too hard. Let's go for the object selection tool, maybe. Okay, wow, this is impressive. Like the object selection tool immediately recognizes the shape of the lion. Um, even though it is very, very blend, well, it's blended in with the background a lot, actually. So let's say we want to brighten this lion up a little bit just to see like what it does. Uh, maybe I'm gonna feather the selection first. So feather, and let's just feather it with, I don't know, 60 pixels. And let's grab the exposure adjustment layer. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Okay, that actually worked really well. Let's see, this is before and after. Okay, not too bad. Interesting. Let's try another example because I'm kind of having fun with this. Let's try um, a tree. Okay, let's go for this tree. Let's see what it does for this one. So let's zoom in and let's select subject. Let's see what it does. Okay, um, I'm not sure what is selected, so let's see the mask icon. It is actually selecting the sky. So let's invert our layer mask, and it did a very, very rough job at the tree, of course. But the grass and the, this, these trees, this looks pretty, pretty solid. Um, I think this is gonna be pretty promising, honestly. There's lots of improvements still to do. Let's try something else, maybe this tree, because there's more. it's more clear that, it, that we have got this tree right now, or maybe this one right here. Let's see what it does for this one. Like so. 
and we're gonna do the same thing select subject I think it just uh, this didn't work so well all right let's go for our object selection tool and this I really like this like it actually understands that we want to select the tree which is awesome like if I just click on the tree it makes a selection I can hit refine obviously I have to do lots of brush work because like there's lots of well basically everything um let's see what it does if I just brush over everything I think affinity should do a pretty good job at selecting this tree with it with the refine selection Okay, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> I messed it up. Uh, my bad. My bad. But I like this this tool. It's gonna save some time. So let's go for another example. Let's say a car, maybe. Um. Well, let's just take an easy example first, and let's see if it recognizes the car, and let's see if I can actually use my subject selection once again okay it it doesn't really understand what the subject is in this case so it somehow thinks that the background is the subject um, but once again like this works really really well so if I click on this and I want to add to the selection I can click on the woman and it just adds the woman to the selection maybe I want to select the shadow no the shadow doesn't really work um, but once again, like this is very, very convincing. Like this will save a lot of time. And now the only thing that I have to do is just dive into the mask and fix the mask. So this is pretty, pretty cool. All right. So I think I'm pretty stoked actually with this new feature, the, especially the object selection tool, which is apparently... Well, it seems to work way better than the subject selection tool. So let's actually do one more example just to see like if we have a model. Let's say this is this should be pretty obvious, right? Like we've got a very clear model right here. So let's go once again, select and select subject. Come on, you got this affinity. You got this. Hmm. Okay. Somehow it doesn't really understand like that. This is the subject, um, which I'm quite surprised about, but I'm pretty sure that this thing is going to do like amazing job. There we go. Like, boom, click. There it is. Click on the head. Boom. There's some slight mistake here. So if I can, okay, this is not going to work. Um, so we need other tools to actually fine tune our selection. Like it's selected a little bit too much here, as you can see. But in general, I think this is going to save us a lot, a lot, a lot of time. There are still some things that we have to fix, as you can see. Like um, if I just grab the move tool, like right here, there's a, like a, a bit that you missed here. So it is not a perfect tool for sure, but just like how quick this was i'm pretty convinced i'm pretty excited about this feature i've been waiting for this for a long time because all the manual selecting just takes a lot of time um, now for this case it would be like pretty easy with the quick selection brush or sorry with the selection brush tool but you can see like if i try to select it it's kind of messing up right here like i have to deselect this bit and then go over it once again and it just misses all these tiny little edges so i have to go back in etc etc this was a good first try of this new feature um i hope you like it as well i'm pretty excited for this and of course they're probably going to improve it over time so thank you affinity for actually implementing this feature well the select subject still has a lot of work to do like this just doesn't work the way it should be that it should work i mean but other than that great job thank you for watching this video and uh, i hope to see you in my next one ciao